Well, if you haven't noticed, I kind of got a thing for collecting anime enamel pins. This is such an awesome niche within a niche kind of community that I've been enjoying for myself for a little bit of time now since November of 2022. And the community is vibrant, it's eclectic, there's so many anime fans and appreciators that dive even further into their appreciation of the art by collecting pins. And the artists and the creators of these pins, the ones who put in the work to manufacture them, and the impassioned collectors that are a part of this community. It's something that I've genuinely been charmed by. And as you all know with this channel, I have been making Notion tutorials around being a creative entrepreneur, specifically within the realm of music and the music OS that I've released. And don't worry, I'll still be coming back around to those tutorial videos, so be sure to stay tuned for those future updates on Music OS and Music OS Plus. And for that, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe below so that you can stay informed of when those latest videos are dropping. Nevertheless, today I wanted to do something special for my fellow pin collectors. What I have done is created a Notion template system for pin collectors. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so as you can see here, we are on the dashboard of the pin collector OS. Now, if this is your first time experiencing Notion, then right at the top, we have a button to a page called Learn Notion. This is just where I've provided some quick and easy information for those just getting started. I have an embedded playlist here with the Notion 101 introduction to get your feet wet, to get comfortable with the platform. And then if you're looking for a bit more, you can open up this toggle for a couple of my favorite YouTubers, including myself, that are doing Notion content. But trust me, there's plenty more out there like Marie Pullen, Red Gregory, Josh Red, and a few others. But this is just a quick resource to get you started if you're unfamiliar with the platform. Now, going back to the Pin Collector OS dashboard, I'm gonna walk you through the fundamentals of what's here within this system. So right off the bat, we have a call out with the six primary databases that will serve as the core of this system. We have our Pin Collection, we have our pin community, the pin series and pin characters, the reviews and proofs, as well as the pin events. They're pretty much verbatim as you read them. Pin collection is the database where all of your pins will actually be documented. And as you can see with this first table view, there are a ton of properties you can fill out to capture that really important metadata about each of the pins within your collection. But we'll come back to that in just a moment. So again, we have our pin collection our pin community, pin series, pin characters, reviews and proofs, and pin events. Right below this section, we have a toggle for the welcome page and change log. So if you've decided to check out with this template, you will likely be introduced on the welcome page, which will introduce you to this system where you can actually duplicate it into your workspace. And then we have the pin collector OS change log. So this is primarily for me to keep track of all of the changes that I've introduced to the original template system. It's a nice place just for you to stay informed about, hey, what changes might have been occurring over the last couple of months to the baseline of this system. This little rocket ship emoji here, as you can see, it indicates the changes that might be worth considering a fresh duplication of the template should you still have access to that original download link. Now, underneath this toggle and the database callout block, we have a linked view of the pin collection database. Now, again, for those who might be unfamiliar with Notion, just think of it as a window into these other databases, right? So you can have the original databases and you can have windows that look into these databases that allow you to interact with the data inside of them in different places. Okay. And so this first one here is just a linked view of our pin collection that is filtered for upcoming drops. As you can see here, this filtered view will only show pins with the drop date that is relative to today within this week. So what that means is this is a dynamic section that anytime you go to track that new pin drop or you know a release is coming up or you're tallying those pins in your system, the ones with the drop dates 
for this week will automatically show up right here in this section. And it's from soonest to furthest away. Now, we also have another tab on this linked view that correlates to the pin events database. And this is just a week view for any upcoming events that you might have. See here, this is an example of if Dragon Con were to actually be happening this weekend and you wanted to keep track of that. Here's one view where you can have that accessible. Following along, we have our buttons here. So these buttons are here to make your life a bit easier when it comes to adding in information about your pin collection. So you'll notice we have the new primary LE, the new primary OE, the new secondary LE, and the log new pin trade. From left to right, the new primary LE is, say for instance, you're buying a new limited edition pin from the primary source, meaning that the creator of that pin is also the person who is selling it to you. That's when you can click on this button here, and what that will do is automatically generate a brand new page inside of the pin collection database and pre-populate some of these properties for you based on that initial assumption that this is a pin that you're collecting that is limited edition that you've bought directly from the primary source. And you'll notice a couple of things automatically filled out. We have our desire rating, so DSO for those that know. The product stage is going to assume released. You have the limited edition automatically selected selected for you based on that initial assumption. The collector status is going to assume that you have already placed the order for this item, but you could always come in and make any adjustments to that saying, hey, this item has already shipped or I've collected it already or any of these other options that you see here. The acquire method is going to be marked as primary sale. The platform purchase is going to assume you bought it directly from the seller's site. But again, you can change that option here if you would like, as well as the assumption of the condition of brand new and the pin being A grade. But of course, you can change that option here as well. Now, when you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this option here, 26 more properties. When you unfurl this, you'll see all of the other properties that you can enter in data about that will help you keep track of all of those amazing details. So for instance, if I wanted to input the pin size, I can add that here. If I wanted to add the variant type as gold, or if it was a combination of pin on pin that had both gold and black nickel, I can do that here. With the effects, I can add that pin on pin. I can add pearl with swirl, glitter, stained glass. So it's just a really convenient way for you to pop in all of these details about the pins that you've just collected. Most of these properties are pretty straightforward. Your drop date, your drop price, your condition, your count. Like if the addition set was 25, you can add that number here. The URL to purchase or see that pin, the pin seller, the amount paid versus the actual drop price. Say the drop price was 25 and with tax and shipping, you ended up paying 30. You could have that officially set here with the amount paid. The estimated value of this pin say for instance you know the secondary market is going for fifty dollars already you can input that here and then how many did you actually purchase say you brought three you were able to buy three on that initial purchase you can enter in that number here and you'll notice that the total spent is a formula property that will automatically calculate the amount spent times the number that you own. So again, making this as convenient as possible for you to enter in this information. And of course, you can also add a drop buddy if you had someone within the community that participated in helping you get this pin drop. So that's how these buttons work. It'll automatically pop you into a brand new page inside of your pin collection database to help you keep track of those new pins with a bit of a head start on the data entry. And naturally we have new primary OE, which stands for open editions. It's going to make certain assumptions about that as well. You'll see here it's automatically going to mark edition as open. The acquire method is open availability, so on and so forth. Same thing with the secondary LE. This is if you're purchasing it from somebody within the community after that initial primary sale. In logging a pin trade, it's going to mark that collective status is traded and the acquire method was for trade and that the platform of purchase was direct. But again, you can always change these assumptions assumptions once you dive into the page. And I just want to reinforce that that page you saw that popped up when I clicked this button, that is how pages will be displayed whenever you click on an item in a database. So say for instance, as you see here, I have a couple of entries. If I click open next to this item, 
Here it's gonna open up in side peak mode. So it's sliding over from the right hand side. And you might see this happening in one of three ways. You might see this side peak view where it slides in from the right. You might see it in the center peak view, something like this. And then you also might just see it as a full page item as well. So don't let that throw you off. It's just different ways to view the same information. But this is how any of these data entries will look when you open up one of the pages inside any of these databases. Same goes for the upcoming drop items right here on your home page as well. I have these set to open up in a side peak view. Naturally, these are here as an example. These are not the actual drop dates for these particular pins. They're just here as an example. And I'm gonna get rid of this random new pin example that I have here. Cool, moving right along, we have the community section as well as a simple table with helpful terms terms and acronyms. Just to address that really quickly, this is a simple table for those who are still learning their way around the PIN community. These are some of the acronyms that you might hear that you would now have a quick reference to to figure out what it is that it means. And of course, as your journey continues, you can add any additional examples down below just by clicking the plus icon that appears at the bottom of this table. Now, moving right along to the community section, we have a linked view of the community database. So again, a window into that original community database that has a table layout grouped by the types of individuals within your community database that you're keeping track of. Here we can see an example of a list of creators. We also have a group for collectors and there are also your drop buddy, your artist, your manufacturer, and you can always add to this list as your community list grows. And this is a helpful view just to see any creators you wanna keep track of, links, which series they create for or for your collectors, which series do they collect, any reviews and proofs that you have, the receipts that you have about purchases or sales proof or trade proof. You can have that linked here as well through the reviews and proof database which we will get to soon enough. Profile pictures, any relationships to anyone else within the community, just in case you wanna know how people are connected. And this is what's referred to as a relational database property. And all that means is that you have two different databases that are related to one another that can point to records inside of one another. And this one has two properties associated with this one relationship. And then lastly, what I felt would be helpful is a section where you can add in creator rules. There's three initial examples here, but as you're going along with your pin collector journey, you might find that different creators have different rules for how they release their pins. And here is where you can actually enter in those details so you can easily keep track of that. Now, we also have a, another view for all without the grouping. We have by RSVP. And what this is useful for is, say for instance, you're keeping track of community members that you've met while you were out and about. Say you went to Dragon Con or Momo Con or any of the cons or a pop-up shop. This is how you can track within your own system. Hey, okay, I met this individual at Momo Con and I met this one at Anime Fest and so on and so forth. And right now it just says no attended because none of these actually have a relation to an event property at this time. But say for instance, I go in, this is my own example page here. And what you'll notice is all of the different properties that I can enter in details about, about this particular community member. There's also a relation for collab pins. Say for instance, I wanted to keep track of which creators have collaborated on a pin drop. I can do that here. And if this person was a drop buddy, which pins did we assist one another with? Now, if I scroll down, what you'll notice are a couple of other relation properties that are just minimized in this section, but they would work functionally the same as any of these properties up here. So if I click on add attended, you'll notice that this is a relation property to the pin events database. And I can select any one of these items as, okay, cool, I attended this fake Dragon Con. I attended that fake pop-up shop and that live stream. And so now you'll see the different events that this particular individual has attended. And now when I go back to that linked view by RSVP, you'll notice the sections down below that say, okay, cool. Here are the people that attended Dragon Con. Here are the people that attended the live stream drop. Here are the ones that attended the pop-up shop. So again, just an easy way for you to get an overview of the people within your community and keep track of them as you see fit for your pin collection journey.
And then lastly, within this linked view, we have a reference to the pin events database again, very similar to the one we have up here with the week view showing you events that are happening this week, except for this one down below, we just have the full calendar so that you can see any upcoming events throughout the next couple of months if you so choose. Using these arrows up here, you can easily click and go to the next month. And here you see a bunch of different examples on the calendar. And I'll go ahead and address this now. It's a double-edged sword, but this calendar does not directly integrate with Google or any of your other calendars at this time. But I do think it's nice to have a space where you can keep track of these calendar style events that is separate from your original calendar, but can also still send you out notifications or reminders about those events. So that is definitely possible. And this system is available on your mobile device as well when you download the Notion app. So we'll come back around to that at a later time. But that is the event calendar view within this community section. Moving right along, we'll scroll down. And the last thing we have on the dashboard is just another linked view at your pin collection database. And this one has three different views. We have the recent gallery, the upcoming drops, except this one has the additional details and the summary about any of the details you've added in to each one of those items. And then we also have the series gallery. This one will group each set of cards based on which series they're a part of. So as you can see, Demon Slayer, Dragon Ball Z, My Hero Academia, One Piece, etc. And that's based on what you've entered in for that particular pin. And the final footnote of this dashboard is this footer section that you see here. And this is just my signature saying, hey, this template has been built by yours truly, Mr. Wild and Free. And you have a couple of links to access me through my Twitter, Discord, the YouTube channel, signing up for the newsletter. And last but especially not least, you have a link to become an affiliate. And yes, that means if you've downloaded this template and you love it so much and you want to share it with others in the pin community, you can become an affiliate and earn 30% of any download that comes from the people you've referred. So definitely be sure to click that link and help us spread the word on this awesome system. That way you can earn from spreading the word and the community can be rewarded for having a go-to system for organizing their pin collection. All right, now what we're gonna do is dive into each and every one of these databases and talk through some of the nuances of this system that truly make it powerful. So we're gonna start with the pin collection database. Now, again, we have a couple of different views here that are simply filtered to show you pins based on predetermined criteria. So this initial view that we have is the date order, and this is sorted for the newest items on top. Next, we have the recent gallery showcasing the recent additions to your pin collection database in the card form with the pictures and the summary so that you can see it all in this nice format. Right after that, we have the series gallery, similar to the one on the dashboard. We also have a DSO view. So this is for any of the pins you are in dire search of, and it will automatically sort those highest ranking up here at the top. Next, we have the status view. This one groups it based on status of ordered, gifted, collected, etc. Then we also have a price and desire board. This price and desire board is similar to any Kanban board. If you're familiar with those or a platform like Trello, you have the option of dragging any one of these items into that next section in order to change that desire rating. So this is just one other way to do it, right? You could easily do that here with the property option itself, but you also have the option to simply drag and drop. Now it is also grouped on price. So if you'll notice there are three sections here and it is segmented in $12 increments. So this is done automatically. So say for instance, I go over to the pin board and this is a, a recent entry that I just grabbed from Instagram. I can add the desire rating as in search of, and I can add the drop date. I can add the price per, I can add the addition set, I can add the count. And then when I hop back over into that price and desire board, you'll notice if I open up this toggle here, that option is now included 
traded in this $24 to 36 range because I marked it as a $25 pin. Now, if I open this up and I change the price, it's going to automatically shift into another section. So I'll add it as a $60 pin for this example. And now when I close this toggle, you'll notice a couple more sections down below with the 48 to 60 dollar range and then the 72 dollar range so these sections are automatically generated based on the price point that you enter for each pin and of course we have the original view for the upcoming drops with the details and then we also have a section for any pins that you might have checked off as archive now one of the most important things about this database and all of the other databases within this system you'll notice this section at the top this is the description of the database. Any database in this system will have a description with a brief disclaimer about what it's for. But right below that is another critical piece to the flow of this system. And what I've done here is hyperlinked each one of these to help as a navigational tool through the system. So if I click on pin dash, it's going to take me back to the pin dashboard. If I click on community, it's going to take me to the community database. If I click on characters, it's going to take me to the characters database, so on and so forth. OK, this is just another means for you to navigate around your system. So with that, we're going to jump right into the next database, which is the pin community database. And very similar to what we had on the home page, we have a group table view based on the type. We have a filtered view specifically to show you just the creators within your community, one for the artists, one for your drop buddies, one for your collectors and one for manufacturers if you're keeping track of them as well. Now, outside of these views and the description, what's really powerful about the rest of these databases in this system would be the template pages that help predefine some of these pages with content to make it easier for you to navigate certain things. So as you'll notice, we have templates for the creator, the artist, the drop buddy, and the collector. Now we're gonna go ahead and look into the creator template. And I'm gonna click here to say edit. And what I'm looking at here is it's going to automatically apply that type as creator if I'm creating a new entry with this template. And then below that, what you'll see is content that already populates this page. And what you'll notice are a couple of things. We have those minimized, we have those minimized relationships to other relation properties, as I had mentioned before. But we also have a breadcrumb, which is just another navigational tool to show you where you are in the hierarchy of these pages. You'll also see a toggle for quick actions, which I'll come back to in a moment. And then we also have a linked view of your pin collection that will automatically filter for this specific creator. And when I say this specific creator, I mean that dynamically. And I'll show you that in one moment. And so you have a view based on status and one by series. And then of course, say this creator is also a friend of yours and you want to add them as a drop buddy. You can click on this button and you'll see here, it'll prompt you with instructions on what's about to happen when you click it. Now, going back to the quick actions, when I unfurl this toggle, you'll notice four different sections. We have the creator, artist, and seller. We have the creator and seller. We have the creator maker only and the seller trader only. Now, these buttons are very similar to the four that are on the home page. However, they're going to make your job that much easier for cataloging pins from specific creators already within your Notion template system. So let's say, for instance, I already have a couple of creators identified and documented in my system, and I wanted to jump into their page to quickly add a new pin that I just purchased from them. If they were the creator as well as the artist and as well as the seller, I can easily click on this button. It'll generate a new pin collection database page for that brand new pin. And as you'll see, the pin maker is marked as creator, the pin seller is marked as creator, and the pin artist already marked as creator. So it just takes a little bit of friction out of that process for you when it comes to identifying and documenting new pins 
in your system. And naturally, each one of these sections do that according to their titles. So the creator and seller will mark this specific creator as both the creator and seller, but not the artist. This one over here, the creator and maker will mark them just as the maker. And then the one on the bottom right will mark them as just the seller of the pin or trader of the pin. Now I'm going to go into one of these actual creator pages so you can see what I mean that those templates are dynamic. So when I open up this pin here from this particular creator and I scroll down, you'll notice these same sections. So we have the quick actions in the toggle. And then we also have a section down here that is automatically displaying pins within the current system that I've already documented that were created by this particular creator. And you'll see when I open up this filter that it's already marked with this particular creator in mind. You don't have to come in here and manually enter this for every creator. That template is automatically going to do that for you. Okay. So that's the power of templates. When I open up this quick actions, notice when I click on new primary LE, same thing applies here. This creator page that I'm on, it's automatically going to pull that specific page. So again, these buttons are dynamic as well. And just like the template for the creator page, we also have a page for the artist and the drop buddy. For the artist template page, the content inside will show you pins that were designed by that particular artist with quick actions that will pre-populate that artist property. For the drop buddy template, you'll have a length view showing any pins that you all have collected together with quick actions that will automatically mark this particular individual as your drop buddy and then for the collector there's not much to track here but if you want to easily turn them into a drop buddy you have a button to do that here this is about your pin collection it's a system to help you organize your collection it's okay if you don't want to keep track of everybody else in their collection as well so that's the power of template pages within the community database now, the rest of these databases also have templates with a similar structure in mind to help you easily find information about your pin collection and to help you easily enter in data about any new pins that you want to catalog within your system. Cool. Moving right along, we'll go to the characters database. Now, it starts with a grouped gallery view based on the series so that you can see characters based on their series. You also have a tab with a table view for all and as you can tell i put a bunch of properties here if you wanted to go wild categorizing all of the anime characters from your favorite series you can do that here go wild but you don't actually have to enter in all of this data it's just there if you would like to and of course this has a template page as well and this template page will provide a linked view to your pin collection database that will show you specifically pins of this character and then you also have quick actions here as well well to automatically generate a pin with that particular character in mind. But again, you can always just enter in that detail about the characters from any other entry point as well. Same goes for any of the other property details. And I meant to drag this column over earlier, but you also have a pin count. So you can see at a glance which characters you might have collected the most pins for. Cool. Now going right along over into the series database, similar structure here. We have your series title. We have a rating so you can actually rank your series here if you wanted to the characters associated with that series how many characters you have tallied for this particular series, as well as the pins and pin count in total. Of course, you have your pin creators and collectors as well. Now, the important part about the pins property on this particular database is that it is a formula property. You'll notice here there is a description that says this pins property is auto populated based on the character's relation property. When you add a character to any series here and that character entry has its own pins property set, this pins formula property in the series database will roll up that entry so that it is viewable here. So too long didn't read, no manual entry required. OK, and I'm going to show you exactly what that means here. As an example, let's say we have our series Demon Slayer. We have our characters, which is a live relation property. And with this particular character, I can click into them and I can see any of the pins associated with this character. 
Now I'm going to use this magnifying glass over to the right here to link an additional existing page. Rather than trying to create a new pin, I'm just going to add another pin to this relation as an example here. So say that this was an Inosuke pin. You'll notice here the pin count went up to two. If I remove this, it's down to one. So that's gonna load that up dynamically. And this is for the pin character. But that same dynamic count applies for that property in the pin C series database as well. So now you'll notice that the pin count is two and you'll see the pins listed here based on the pins associated with the character. So I hope that makes sense. Now we also have the series template. And if I go inside of this template page, you'll notice a similar linked view that will only show pins from this particular series. You have another view for by pin maker. So this will just group them by pin maker. And then you also have a linked view to the characters database and a button to add in a new character here if you would like as well. And I will go and show you what that looks like on a live page. Here I will go to the One Piece page, for example and I'll open that up, you'll see pins from One Piece. And then to the right hand side, you'll see Luffy, Law and Yamato. And that's just another quick and easy way to jump into those character pages. So that's the pin series database. All right, two more to go, y'all, we're almost done. Next, we have the reviews and proofs database. This database is for keeping track of those proofs, your trade proof, your sales proof, your purchase proof. And if I open up one of these pages, you'll notice it's not complex. There's not a bunch of stuff in here. It's just a place that you can easily keep track of those proofs. You can send your screenshots into this database and it'll keep track of those things for you. And you can and you can relate them to the specific creators or other community members that might have been associated with that particular sale or trade or purchase. And again, this is accessible from your mobile device as well. So if you have Notion downloaded on your phone, it's actually very easy to just send one of to just send a screenshot from whatever app you're in directly into this Notion system, into the reviews and proof database for you to keep track of it here. Again, I'll come back to the mobile experience at another time. Naturally, we have different views filtered for those particular statuses. So we have an option. So we have a view filtered for the inbox, the reviews, the sales proof, the trade proofs and the purchase proofs. And then the template pages for these are pretty straightforward. They're not really they're not really elaborate. It's just the icon and the status. They're mostly negligible. If at any point you add in a new pin item here and you wanted to change several of their icons at once, you can and you wanted to change several of their icons at once to the left hand side of any entry, you'll see a checkbox. You can check that to select it. And then using the three dots here in this dynamic menu that appears, you can click on that, say icons. And here you can select any icon that you want to actually add in as an alternative to the current one. And so you'll see these items have their icons switched. Awesome. Last but not least, we have the events database. And again, we have the calendar view. So you can actually see all of the items within your calendar in this view. You have the table view, which lists them all out with all of the various properties that you can enter in details for these particular events, including the costs that might be associated with attending. And then you also have these various statuses, documented, postponed, rescheduled, going, archived, canceled, and completed. And you have another view for the status board so that you can see and manage these events in a Kanban board fashion. You have the one-off events, your weekly events, your bi-weekly events, your monthly events, and your annual events. And of course, there are template pages for each one of these as well. Now, these are special because they also have filtered views for the pin collection to show you pins that are exclusive to this event. And their quick actions also have buttons specifically for that purpose as well, right? If you want to track a primary purchase that is an event exclusive pin, you can click on this button and it will automatically add in that addition detail here for you. Same with the secondary pin sale of an event exclusive pin here as well. And all of these will mark down the event as a part of that pin entry. And that's it. That is the pin collector OS in its entirety. So I hope that has been incredibly helpful for you all. 
as you can tell, it's a passion of mine and I wanted to share a bit of my organizational and productivity skills with the community by offering this template. I put a lot of time and effort into it to provide you all with an immense amount of value. So if you've purchased this template already and you're watching this as an overview before you dive in, I want to say thank you very much for your support. And if you haven't yet purchased this template, there will be a link below where you can find access to that. And without a doubt, please y'all go ahead and join to become an affiliate. So that way, when you spread the word about this pin collector, system, you're able to be rewarded for sharing that value with others in the community as well. Now, one last thing I wanted to point out is if I go back to the pin collector change log, remember I mentioned the rocket ship emoji. Now, the likelihood that there will be any major changes to this template over the next couple of months is actually rather slim. I have already been working on this template for about a year now to refine it, and I've had a small group of beta testers helping me to pinpoint any of the bugs and fixes and improvements so that it was fully tailored by the time I launched it. Nevertheless, if you've downloaded this template closer to the airing of this video and later on down the line, you see that the change log has some other important updates to that core system. If you want to update your template to that newer version after you've already downloaded it and integrated it as a part of your workspace, there is a method to doing so. I have a video about migrating data between Notion template systems, and I will link to that here or in the description below. So be sure to watch that video so you understand how you can migrate data from an existing template system into an upgraded version of that template system. So I hope that helps those of you all who are finding this video sometime after it's aired or sometime after you have downloaded and gotten acclimated with your pin collector OS template. So that's that on that y'all. It's your boy, Mr. Wild and Free, AKA Mr. Pin Well. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for your time. Till next time, peace. And blessings, peace and blessings.